center-right country. Remember last year about how Barack Obama talked about how he, he was going to cut taxes of people who made less than $250,000 a year. They deserve a tax cut. I'm sort of obsessive about these things, so I had one of my aides go and look at every single Obama speech between June and November and count how many words he devoted to cutting taxes and how many words he devoted to raising taxes. And guess what? For every four words he devoted between June and November to cutting taxes, he mentioned one about raising taxes. And most of the time it was, I want to restore tax levels to the way they were under Bill Clinton. Which, of course, nobody knows whether they were higher or lower under Bill Clinton. The average man doesn't know. In fact, think about this. What was the most widely watched speech that Barack Obama gave last fall? The speech in Denver, the convention speech. And guess what? He talks about cutting taxes, but he doesn't mention one word about raising taxes in the most widely watched speech of his entire campaign. Why? Because he understands what we know in this room that America is a center-right country. And yet, this man has signed a tax increase on those people he said he wasn't going to raise taxes on, people making less than $250,000. Signed a cigarette tax in February. Now, I'm not a smoker. I saw what it did to my father. I'm not a particular fan of it. But every economist and every economic study on, this, on cigarette tax says it's regressive. It falls on people at the lower end of the, of the, of the, of the pay scale because they tend to smoke more. So what happened to that promise, Mr. President, that solemn, sacred promise? In fact, he endorsed and pushed for and got approved by the House of Representatives the cap and trade bill, which amounts to a seventeen or $1,800 a year tax on anybody who happens to own a light switch and use it. Anybody who has a car key and something that they put that car key into, or anybody who happens to buy anything that is manufactured, sold, or shipped in the United States of America will pay a higher tax, if you will, because of the cap and trade bill. The House form of HR 3200, the House Health and Health Bill, Health Care Bill, has four taxes which will fall on people making less than two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Did you see the argument on Sunday? Stephanopoulos and the Merriam-Webster Dictionary versus Barack Obama sort of reminded me of the definition of what matters what is is. <laughs> President Obama says, I'm going to tax anybody who doesn't buy health uh, insurance up to $3,800 a family, but it's not a tax. Oh, yeah, really? George pulls out the dictionary and Obama says, hey, I'm the president. I can define what words mean. Well, go to the bill. The House bill and the Senate bill. Read the section on it. It refers to the Internal Revenue Service Code. And if you don't pay it, guess who's coming after you? It's not the non-tax people. It is the tax people who are coming after you. The IRS. <laughs> My point is, is that we are a center-right country. And if you need proof, look at the chief executive. You got there by running as a centrist candidate. Remember that promise? I'm going to scrub the budget line by line. End quote. I'm going to cut wasteful programs. I'm going to, quote, end wasteful programs that do not work. Of course, one of the first things he got in, did when he got into office was sign a $410 billion omnibus spending bill that increased discretionary domestic spending 10% in one year. He signed a $30 billion plus increase in S chip. He signed a $787 billion stimulus bill. Promised us that if we did that by this quarter, Unemployment would peak at no more than 8%, and he'd create three and a half million new jobs by the end of next year. Well supported by the women members of the faculty. <laughs> and the other guy is 
is the guy in charge of collecting federal taxes, who as soon as he can figure out how he can pay his own taxes, was getting ready to start making sure you pay yours. So on December 16th, President Obama sends those two men to Capitol Hill to say, we need a stimulus bill. The economy is hurt. We would need to stimulate the economy. We're willing to accept between a $650 and a $750 billion dollar bill, but we're willing to go to $850. So, of course, Congress heads towards $850. And then they sat there and described less than $200 billion dollars of what they wanted to have in the bill, including some really dumb ideas that Congress, Democrat and Republican alike, said it ain't going anywhere. This is, quote, new jobs credit, which has been shown by economists to have absolutely no effect whatsoever on creating new jobs. But think about that. We believe the economy needs to be stimulated. Democrats and Republicans alike. And the president like sends his chief guys up to the hill to say to the Democrat appropriators, we're only willing to describe less than a third of what we want to have in the bill. You go have fun describing the rest. Now, with all due respect to members of Congress, particularly liberal Democrat appropriators, that's an invitation to do lots of stupid things. And that's exactly what they did. Think about this. This is a bill that spends more in 2011 to 2019 than it spends in 2009. Remember all this talk about infrastructure and how we're going to have, quote, shovel-ready projects? 5% of the total is infrastructure. If we needed to stimulate our economy, and we did, we should have done it the way the Australians did. I hate to turn to a foreign country to forgot it, but the Australians said, you know what we need to do? We need to put people, give people back some of their own money so they can spend it as they see fit, because the government is not going to be able to stimulate the economy like letting the working people have back their money. We should have provided a healthy, dramatic tax cut to individuals, small businesses, and a cut in the corporate tax rate if we wanted to stimulate the economy. Yeah. 